A few years ago, I watched a film that foundationally changed my life. The film starred Bradley Cooper as a down-on-his-luck writer who couldn't write. He was unfit, unhealthy and depressed. And he bumped into this old friend and this old friend said to him, look, I've got this pill. And if I give you this pill, you'll gain the full access to 100% of your brain rather than the small amount most of us usually use. With nothing to lose, Bradley took the pill and he became limitless. Armed with more mental processing power than anyone else on the planet, he quickly found his way to Wall Street and made millions. He became irresistible to everyone that he met. But of course, there's always a catch. There's always consequences to pills like this. A very soon debilitating side effect started to kick in and a dwindling supply sent poor old Bradley on a Hollywood roller coaster to destruction. But I remember thinking, just imagine a pill like that really existed. A pill that would make you fitter, faster, healthier, wealthier, and the only side effect being happiness. Just imagine there was a pill like this. Just imagine that pill existed. Well, it does. And this is my story of how I found it. So let's start at the beginning. Age 16, I was gifted the most wonderful opportunity to go and play professional football. And to set the scene, I was tipped for the top. I was tipped to play for England by my mum. <laughs> and there was only one thing wrong with my mum's prediction. I wasn't very good. And on the first day of training in amongst the other 40 professionals, I realised that actually I need to start thinking differently. You see, I had the heart of a lion, but the control and technique of Bambi. <laughs> so I had to think outside the box. I started to read uh, personal development. I started to think differently, act differently, prepare differently. And against all the odds, I made it into the first team. And I scored in the professional league, my boyhood dream, one goal. And it was a thunderbolt from about five yards. <laughs> But I did it. And just when things were starting to get exciting, I was injured and my career was finished. But that experience of thinking differently and getting a different result never, ever left me. So I packed up my dodgy knee. I put gel through my shocking footballer's haircut. Mine was long and ginger. What's that all about? <laughs> and I set sail around the world. And I arrived back to London about five years later to make my fortune. And more by luck than judgment, I stumbled into oil broken. You know the guys in the pits with the bright jackets on, screaming and shouting at one another? That was me, and I loved it. It was the closest thing I'd ever found to professional sport. It was fast-paced, exhilarating, electric. There was even the odd slide sack and the odd <laughs> sending off. And I loved it. And in record time, I built a really big business. Fast forward 10 years, and I'd sort of made it in many ways. I'd reached that place where conventional wisdom tells you happiness resides. I had the car, the career, the family, the cash in the bank. And I remember as I moonwalked into the office one day, expecting to hear choirs of angels and harps playing, nothing. I was like a five out of ten in terms of my happiness and my well-being. It just didn't make any sense. And I looked around the rest of the city at people more successful than me, and I saw much of the same. Broken bodies, broken minds broken homes. I didn't aspire to any of that at all. But rather than do something drastic, like resign and run off to a monastery, as I was tempted to do, I thought, no, I'm going to stay with the career I love, but I'm going to do things differently. And it was in this moment, Bradley Cooper came to me in a vision. And he said, Andy, you remind me of a film I once starred in. I said, Bradders, that's what his friends call him. I said, Bradders, let me guess. Limitless. He said, no. I said, I've got it. A star is born. He said, no, the hangover. And he was right. My life would become one long winded hangover. And it was in that moment I remembered the limitless pill again. And I thought to myself, just imagine I could find that limitless pill that would make me fitter, faster, healthier, wealthier, and the only side effect being happiness. Just imagine I could find that pill. Then I resigned. And I set sail around the world to find the limitless pill. I trained with the best of the best, thought leaders, big thinkers and coaches. I went back to university twice to finish a degree, then a master's degree, which will become a PhD. And I still couldn't find the limitless pill. But then, more by luck than judgment, I stumbled across a study by Professor Kevin Moore of the London Royal Free Hospital. 
and I found it. You see, Professor Kevin Moore had just conducted the largest ever study into a 28-day break from alcohol. And these were just normal participants, normal drinkers. On average, they lost three kilograms in weight, reduced their liver fat by 40%, reduced their risk of type 2 diabetes and certain types of cancer. Professor Kevin Moore was so enthused by the results that he said, if these results were found in a pill, everyone would want it, and it would be worth billions. In that moment, I knew I had a choice. I had a choice to continue drinking, as I'd always done, or I had a choice to take a limitless pill and stop. I chose the limitless pill, and this is what happened. I have to admit, at first, I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> There's definitely a song in here somewhere, isn't there? But I was frightened because, you see, drinking was how I socialized, celebrated, commiserated, met my wife, did business, entertained clients. The thoughts of taking that away scared the life out of me. But there was one thing, one thing that scared me more than anything. Would I become boring? It's everyone's greatest fear as soon as they stop drinking. Will you become boring? I agonized. My lovely wife would run off with the really exciting postman. <laughs> what would happen to fun time, four drinks, Andy? And how the hell was I going to dance at weddings? <laughs> Just impossible. But I thought to myself, I've got to give this a try. So I did 28 days of taking the limitless pill and not drinking. And my life was changed. I remember I woke up on a Saturday morning. The sun was shining and I'd slept like I hadn't slept in years. I was invigorated. I was excited. My wife was in love with me for once. I was in love with her. The kids were even on top form for once. And I thought, I want more of this. But around this time, the social pressure was really starting to build up. People I admired within my industry told me on no uncertain terms, if you continue taking the limitless pill and not drinking, and you refuse to entertain your clients by drinking, your career might be over. That's serious social pressure, right? But unperturbed, I kept going. 28 days became 60 days, became 90 days taking the li limitless pill and not drinking. My world was transformed. Firstly, I lost a lot of weight, three stone or 42 pounds. My body fat went from 30% down to below 10% where it is today. I got my mojo back, my time back, my oomph for life came flooding back. I was on fire. And those people that said my business would suffer, they were wrong. In the same industry, in half the time, whilst taking the limitless pill, I grew a business that was not once, not twice, but seven times bigger. But it doesn't end there. I started to get up early. I started to wake up at 6 a.m. and then 5 a.m. I hadn't seen 5 a.m. since I was running around IB for a few years earlier. And here I was with two hours before work to get fit, to get healthy. I wrote my first book, The 28 Day Alcohol Free Challenge, co-founded a movement called OneYouKnowBeer.com, which is a 28, 90 and 365 day challenge before the kids were awake. And the boring thing never happened. My wife didn't run off with a postman. I think. <laughs> My best friend Lenny let me out the boring corner. Fun time Andy started to show up everywhere. And I even danced sober at a wedding. <laughs> wasn't pretty, wasn't nice to look at, but I did it. And there's more. A year prior to taking the limitless pill, when I was drinking, like all of my peers, just as much as everyone else, I went to see a cardiologist. And the cardiologist said, Andy, you have heart disease. That's not good, right? Even I know that for someone in their 30s. Fast forward one year after taking the limitless pill and not drinking, I went back to the same cardiologist. And it was like seeing Professor Kevin Moore. I walked into the room and he said, your results are staggering. Your resting heart rate's gone from 68 down to 44. Your cholesterol levels are amazing. Oh, and your heart disease. You've stopped it. In fact, we were so interested by your results, we took a closer look and it appears as though You've reversed it. Pretty cool, eh? Now, I get it. It wasn't just down to the limitless pill and not drinking that those wonderful things happened, but it was 100% down to the limitless pill that I had the energy, the mojo, the consistency to make all those other behavioral changes in my life that added up to me reducing my heart disease. Now, I get it, right? I get it. 80% of the adult population currently drinks, and this is hard to get your head around. I feel a little bit like... 
a ginger Christopher Columbus, and I'm on the shoreline, and I'm telling you all, don't panic, the world really is round, or someone in the 1960s putting their hand up and saying, I think this smoking thing's pretty bad for us. I sort of get it. This is difficult to get your head around. But there is a real shift happening. And I know there's children in the audience today, and whilst my talk clearly is not directed at you guys, it's important to know that your peers, the millennials, are drinking less than ever. In fact, over the last 10 years, the number of young people remaining completely abstinent has doubled. How cool is that? We're at the vanguard. We're at the start of something special. Movements like Sober Easters, Club Soda, Hello Sun Sunday Morning, and our very own OneYouKnowBeer.com are seeing participation go through the roof. Thought leaders like Catherine Gray and Rich Roll and Annie Grace are inspiring millions of people towards an alcohol-free lifestyle. There is a movement happening, and it's growing momentum by the day. But I get it. It's hard to get your head around this whole thing. So let's just flip this. I want to give you a different perspective on this whole alcohol thing. Let's turn it into a real-world scenario. What I want you all to do is imagine you're aliens, right? And you've all just flown down from planet Zog, and you're interested to hear about this alcohol thing and this limitless pill. So let's start with the alcohol thing. I get it, right? There has to be some upside. 80% of the adult population currently drink. I had some great times. I had some fun times. I'm not going to deny that around alcohol. But when you get a bit of space and you start to take the limitless pill, you start to realize that maybe it's fake fun because what it pretends to offer, it takes away. When it pretends to help you relax, it makes you more anxious and depressed the following day. When it pretends to build connection, it ruins relationships. When it pretends to relieve boredom, it takes away your mojo and your ability to do exciting things, right? And that's some of the, the upside, as it were. And I get it, some people turn towards alcohol to soothe the way and underlying pain. I totally understand that. But here's the thing, once again, it's just robbing you of the opportunity to deal with those things in a proactive manner, right? And that's the upside. The downside I could bang on about all night, but I'm going to leave that to the scientists and the government. I'm not going to go on about things such as alcohol being linked to cancer in over 50 studies now, specifically breast cancer that most people don't know, or that it's linked to 50% of violent crime. I'll leave the scientists and the government to that. But what's important to know is this. On average, if you think about it, with this thing on earth we have called compound interest, people probably spend between 100 and 300,000 pounds on this thing. And there's another thing. When we try and stop doing it and take the limitless pill, Friends, family, colleagues, they come out the woodwork and try and twist our rubber arms and put pressure on us to drink. It's nuts. And of that 80% of the adult population that currently drink, probably 7 or 8% become horrifically dependent on this substance. And I guarantee every single person in this room knows someone directly linked to them that suffered incredibly at the hands of alcohol. But that's enough of that. Let's talk about the limitless pill. The limitless pill. Ah, the limitless pill will make you fitter, faster, healthier, wealthier. It will give you your mojo back, your oomph back, your zest for life back, your momentum, your consistency in life back. The limitless pill will even give you glowing skin. The limitless pill will make your eyes bright. The limitless pill will even give you sober hair. It's a real thing, more bouncy and voluptuous, totally wasted on me, I know. But there's one side effect. There's one side effect to the limitless pill. Happiness. Now, I know you're not whalians, I think. But let me ask you this. Let me challenge you for the next 28 days before you go back to Planet Zog. For the next 28 days, you have two choices. You can drink, as you've always done. Or you can take the limitless pill and stop. And just imagine all those advantages that I've spoken of are waiting for you. And you will never find out unless you try. And remember this, there's nothing to lose but everything to gain by giving it a go. So let me ask you, for the next 28 days, will you decide to do exactly as you've always done around alcohol or take the limitless pill? The choice is yours. Thank you. <laughs>